Like it or not, electric vehicles are the future of the car industry, and right at the heart of EVs, the battery plays a fundamental role in determining their performance, range, and just overall appeal. As the key component powering the vehicle, the battery's capacity, energy density, and charging speed directly influence how practical and desirable EVs are for everyday use. But not all EV batteries are built in the same way. So in this video, we'll be diving into a specific type of battery that's used quite quite frequently in electric vehicles for its durability, affordability, and safety LFP batteries. And just by considering that even Tesla has been utilizing this type of battery in their already popular models such as the Model 3 and Model Y, and will continue incorporating them in future vehicles is enough to demonstrate the importance that LFP batteries play in the world of electric vehicles. So if you're an EV owner, Tesla fan, or just curious about the best practices to keep LFP batteries healthy and to maximize their range over the years of ownership, keep watching this video till the end where we'll be discussing six best practices for keeping LFP batteries healthy. All right, so let's start with the basics. What are LFP batteries and why are they becoming popular in the world of EVs? Well, LFP, which stands for lithium iron phosphate, is a type of lithium ion battery that's making its way into more EV models on the market. EVs tend to use two types of batteries, cobalt-based batteries and lithium iron phosphate batteries, LFP. And LFP batteries are being used more and more by EV manufacturers nowadays in contrast to cobalt-based batteries due to many reasons, like being cheaper to source and build, having stronger heat resistance, having a slower degradation time, and avoiding the use of controversial materials like cobalt. All right, but why are big EV automakers switching to and utilizing LFP batteries in many of their production models? Well, as mentioned earlier, Tesla kicked off the LFP trend in 2021 by using these batteries in the standard range versions of its Model 3 and Model Y. And initially, the switch happened in China due to the material shortages of 2021, but by 2022, the US models followed. LFP batteries resulted in being more resistant to degradation while being more cost efficient for the company. But what about the higher end and long range Tesla models? Well, Tesla models like the Cybertruck still rely on nickel based batteries, which provide more energy per pound and tend to occupy less space as well, essentially for longer trips and and powerful acceleration. But Tesla isn't alone in this shift to LFP for many of their higher production models. Ford, for example, uses LFP batteries in the Mustang Mach-E in Europe with plans to add them to the F-150 Lightning in the US, while GM's new Chevrolet Bolt will also use LFP packs to make EV ownership even more affordable. And this trend really makes sense as well, LFP batteries usually offer shorter range, they're cheaper, safer, and ideal for standard range and everyday driving of commercial EVs where extremely long range isn't always a priority. LFP batteries are also longer lasting and can handle more charging cycles than their nickel-based counterparts, with studies even suggesting that giving a second life to LFP batteries is a better environmental option than manufacturing other batteries. And for most drivers, they still deliver more than enough range, as the average daily US commute is just under 45 miles round trip, and with more charging stations popping up everywhere, the slightly shorter range of LFP batteries isn't always a big deal. But here's a question, how do they truly perform in the real world? Well, LFP Model 3 owners report that after nearly a year, their battery degradation is usually quite minimal, around 2% after over 20,000 miles, which is really fantastic actually. And many say that their LFP batteries durability and consistent performance, even with frequent 100% charges, make it a great choice for daily use. So looking forward, we'll see more automakers adopting LFP in newer models most likely. Tesla has hinted that its upcoming sub $25,000 compact EV might use an LFP battery. And while high performance models like the Cybertruck and the hopefully upcoming Tesla Roadster will most likely stick to their nickel based packs for now, the affordable LFP option will likely keep expanding.
beginning. Okay, now LFP batteries form part of the lithium batteries family, with the other popular batteries being the NMC and the NCA batteries that are often used in EVs. And each battery type gets its name from the materials used in its cathode, where lithium ions flow during discharge. However, LFP batteries have a few advantages over their NMC and NCA cousins. Compared to NMC and NCA batteries, LFPs are highly heat resistant, incredibly stable, and degrade slower over time. NCA and NMC combine metals with nickel and cobalt to make them last longer and hold the most energy. However, these two elements are very heavily criticized due to their carbon footprint, while LFP batteries are more environmentally friendly and have 15 to 25% lower carbon emissions. So again, this makes them ideal for applications where safety, longevity, and sustainability are key. In fact, studies even show that LFP batteries can achieve a cycle life two to four times longer than NMC batteries, making them ideal for applications that require frequent charge and discharge cycles like EVs and energy storage systems as well, which is one of the reasons Tesla recommends charging LFP batteries to 100% without always worrying about intense degradation like with other battery types, which was proven by a 2020 paper from the Journal of Electromechanical Society with the study being titled Degradation of Commercial Lithium Ion Cells as a Function of Chemistry and Cycling Conditions. And and this was performed at the Sandia National Laboratories. That being said though, keeping an LFP at 100% state of charge for an extended period of time is still not recommended at all. All that to say, lithium batteries work by moving lithium ions between the cathode and the anode, typically made of graphite during charge and discharge cycles. So when charging, lithium ions leave the cathode, move to the anode, creating an electric current, whereas when discharging, the ions flow back, releasing energy to power devices. Hey, if you have a Tesla yourself and you're interested in buying some accessories for it, either your Model Y or Model 3, make sure to check out my Amazon storefront. There's a link down below in the description where you can get some of the top Tesla accessories that I use on my own vehicle and recommend you look into as well. I get a tiny little kickback on your purchases, so it's a great way to support the channel if you enjoy my content. Now, let's get a bit technical to better understand Stand LFP batteries and how they work. So voltage is critical in determining the battery's capacity, efficiency, and lifespan for an LFP, where higher voltage batteries deliver power more efficiently and can handle longer charge cycles, which helps enhance longevity. In LFP batteries, voltage doesn't fluctuate as dramatically through the charge cycles as it does in other types of batteries. And this helps maintain the battery's overall stability. So at a high state of charge, say, around 100%, the voltage stabilizes at around 3.65 volts per cell, while a fully discharged LFP cell will be closer to 2.5 volts. And these characteristics make LFP batteries less susceptible to thermal runaways and make them a safer, more predictable option in EVs. In LFPs, the charging process is governed by distinct voltage stages influencing the charging rate and battery health. Bulk absorption and float. Each stage corresponds to specific voltage levels, ensuring the battery is charged efficiently and safely. And it's important to understand that these batteries operate efficiently within specific charging parameters with regulated voltage and current settings to prevent overcharging. A battery's state of charge will depend on its voltage, and when the battery is charged, the voltage increases. Batteries are the most expensive component of any EV, affecting your EV's performance range and longevity, which is why it's important to maintain your EV battery's health. An LFP's useful life can range between 3,000 and 5,000 charging cycles, which can increase up to 7,000 with adequate charging practices. So Tesla, along with other EV manufacturers offers some guidance here. For example, Tesla recommends regularly charging your LFP battery up to 100%. Why is this? Well, it's because of the battery monitoring system, BMS for short, as LFP batteries have a voltage that does not vary as much with state of charge. So it is difficult to use voltage as a predictor of battery life. And by charging LFP batteries to 100% every couple of weeks or so, the BMS has a set 
point to recalibrate its capacity prediction and give accurate range estimates. Additionally, as LFP batteries don't suffer as much from the strain of staying fully charged as their cobalt cousins, this advice makes LFP batteries easier to manage as it isn't as critical to keep your charge between 20 and 80% at all times. That being said, even LFP should not be held at 100% state of charge for long periods of time. Other recommendations from Tesla to improve your battery life include avoiding the drop in battery charge below 20%. So just make sure to limit the amount of time that your car's battery is below a 20% state of charge on your day-to-day -day driving. And to ensure that your battery is always going to maintain a proper state of charge, make sure to plug it in every day when you get home from work or any other outing so that it maintains say an 80 or 90% state of charge basically all the time. Now for supercharging recommendations, it is recommended to pre recondition the battery when navigating to one of these rapid chargers, as this can help charge faster as well as avoid colder temperatures as these can reduce charging speeds for LFP batteries. And now that we know what LFP batteries are and what manufacturers recommend, let's talk about some best practices to ensure your LFP battery lasts and performs at its best. So number one here, yes, Tesla recommends charging your LFP battery to 100% at least once a week, but it's important to not do this too often as this is only a recommendation to recalibrate the BMS system. As research suggests that always maintaining full charge might actually increase wear dramatically over time as this is compounded over the years. So a good habit is to charge to 100% only when you need the full range like before a longer trip and charging to around 80 to 90% on a daily basis can keep your battery's chemistry stable while still giving you plenty of range. Best practice number two is avoid letting your battery run too low. So while LFP batteries are more tolerant of being fully discharged than other lithium type batteries, while well, regularly running it down below 20% and even down to 0% is not ideal at all. Studies show that maintaining a low charge, especially for longer periods of time, can gradually increase cell resistance, leading to performance and range loss. So always try to recharge when your battery hits hits around 20% and leave the car plugged in whenever you aren't using it. Number three, avoid extreme temperatures. So LFP batteries are safer at higher temperatures, but extreme temperatures could still be a cause for concern, especially when say supercharging. So if possible, avoid leaving your car parked in direct sunlight or high heat temperatures as heat can accelerate chemical reactions inside the battery, leading to faster degradation over time. So for example, parking in the direct sunlight if you live in New Mexico versus parking in the shade or using a reflective windshield cover even can make a real difference here over the years of ownership. However, low temperatures below 32 degrees Fahrenheit for an extended period of time can also degrade the battery's health, especially for LFP batteries, which charge slower under cold conditions. Number four, use regular slower charging for daily needs. So fast charging is definitely convenient, but for the long-term health of LFP batteries, slow and more regular charging is generally considered to be better. Now, yes, research does indicate that regular slow charging like plugging in at home overnight reduces the strain on your battery cells and can even extend their lifespan on contrast to supercharging. Even though I did make a recent video speaking about the effects of supercharging and data does tend to show that supercharging isn't as bad as we once thought for charging your vehicle. However, the amount of data relative to people who only supercharge relative to level one or two charging is very minimal. So if you can can try to fast charge less often than level one or two charging for daily use. Best practice number six, use preconditioning to optimize battery performance. So many EVs offer a preconditioning feature that heats or cools the battery before driving or even before fast charging. And this can improve battery performance and efficiency by ensuring that it's at the ideal temperature, reducing strain and extending its lifespan. Best practice number seven here, use regenerative braking when possible. So regen braking not only improves range by recapturing energy from braking, but it also helps to extend battery life as recapturing energy reduces the energy demands 
on the battery, which can help conserve health over time. And finally, if you're ever storing your EV, try to store it at 50% state of charge for longer periods. And this is because if you're storing your EV for an extended period, aiming to keep the state of charge at about 50% can minimize the risk of degradation due to, again, higher voltage, as charging to a 100% before storage accelerates the battery's wear by promoting chemical reactions inside the cell. By doing this, you can minimize the stress over your LFP battery and keep it healthy while not in use. So there you have it. LFP batteries are rising in popularity among EV manufacturers due to their many benefits. And whether you're driving a Tesla Model 3 or Model Y or any other EV with an LFP battery, these practices can help you get the most out of your vehicle. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more Tesla and EV content. Hey, if you have a Tesla yourself and you're interested in buying some accessories for it, either your Model Y or Model 3, make sure to check out my Amazon storefront. There's a link down below in the description where you can get some of the top Tesla accessories that I use on my own vehicle and recommend you look into as well. I get a tiny little kickback on your purchases, so it's a great way to support the channel if you enjoy my content. And if you want to learn more about Teslas, make sure to check out one of these two videos right here. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.